Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning I'm here at my mom's apartment in Calgary Alberta with Fern and Ivy but Julius and Mina are in the bedroom so my mom is in uh, Cancun right now in Mexico she booked her flight her ticket and her um, like her package or her accommodations pretty last minute it's a last minute decision to go and meet my sister and her partner down there for five days so she had texted me asking if I knew anybody to take care of Julius and Mina and um, it didn't actually like dawn on me I didn't realize that I could do it until a little while later I was like wait a second I can just drive out and take care of them like I would be happy to do that so today might actually be my last day here I arrived um, I can't even remember now well I guess five days ago six days ago because I came a day early and when I was planning my trip out here and what that would look like I think I have to go get Julius actually because he is he's crying okay this is Julius <laughs> I'll introduce you guys to him a little bit more later, but uh, he was just crying on the bed. He can't jump down because he is blind. I drove out about six days ago and, oh, when I was planning this trip and what this trip was going to look like for me, I decided that I was going to use it as kind of like a, maybe like a, uh, a retreat of sorts. Um, to just got, get caught up on a lot of back-end stuff that I've got going on here that isn't worth sharing whatsoever. It's a lot of um, just like DNS and like serv name server related stuff in the back end of my domain host. And I'm switching over most things from Grumble Farm to Gritty Gracious, which I still have to make a video about. I have so much to share with you guys about that decision. And then I just had so many emails and so many YouTube comments and so many DMs and so many messages and so many texts that I needed to get back to that I was so far behind on that I just decided to not put any pressure on myself to actually create any content, whether it was filming for YouTube or just creating short form stuff or whatever. I also had a brand send us a product that I, I didn't know if I needed to um, like create or film while I was here or not. Turns out maybe not. But anyways, the last time I was in Calgary, I vlogged the entire trip. I vlogged like day one to five. It was, um, I was here for a different reason. I was here to get my hair cut and uh, I did a couple of other kind of self-care things um, back in November that I created a, a playlist of like a vlog series about here on YouTube. This trip was a little bit different and when I vlogged for all five days the last time that I was in Calgary, it was so much work. Like it's so much work to document your day as you're going about it. When it's edited, like when Jesse edits this together, it always seems like so easy and so natural, but to be walking around with a camera all the time and worrying about batteries and like memory card storage and like just getting all the angles and filming your day, it's actually like extremely hard. Mina! Mina is like big time chihuahua vibes. All she does is like bark and snarl at things. She's actually pretty sweet when she's like feeling submissive and playful, but she's just like so like she's quintessentially Chihuahua. So I'll show her to you later if she if she lets me. She's tried to bite me a couple of times. I think she really misses my mom. So anyway, I decided not to vlog while I was here. I just wanted to take that pressure off of myself. And because I haven't been on camera at all, I've just looked like this the entire time that I've been here. Actually, I've looked worse because I've either been like walking around 
wearing nothing or um, wearing like my big ugly house coat and uh, my hair up in a bun and like not doing anything, no makeup and whatever. But I had this idea that maybe I would vlog just one day and today would be the day that I would actually vlog the day because I'm going to pick up my mom at the airport and I thought it would just be really fun to go through the day, kind of get ready for her to come back. I want to clean up and tidy her apartment a little bit. Um, there's a couple things that I want to go out and um, and like pick up and some errands that I run, want to run because I don't know if I'm going to be leaving like tomorrow morning or, or soon or whatever and I just want to do a couple more things while I'm in the city. And then I thought that we could give the pugs a bath and Mina too. I don't know what she's like in baths but I probably do her separately to get them all like fresh and clean and like smelling nice because we can pack them into the car. I'm gonna drive my mom's car up to the airport to go and pick her up um, with the dogs because she misses them so much. I've been texting her every day and she really, really, really misses them. So I thought that would just be a nice fun thing to do and an entertaining thing to document and to capture. She's actually landing at 9.45 p.m. Both me and my mom are the kind of person that is in bed at like seven o'clock p.m. So she's gonna be jet lagged. Uh, she's gonna be really over overwhelmed. She's going to be just tired and exhausted from her trip and I know that all she's going to want to do is come home and go to bed. So I just want to make this process as like positive and fun and like easy for her as possible, which also includes maybe like getting out of her hair as soon as possible so she can reacclimatize to the city and um, just get back into her routine before she gets back to work on Monday. So yeah, I just thought it would be a unique like fun day to create a vlog about so that when I get back to the cabin, Jesse can edit this together and we can have a Calgary vlog. So that was my idea, um, that's my pitch to you guys, even though you don't really get a say in it because by the time you're watching this, I already did it. But as you can see, today is kind of an amazing day to be doing this because I woke up this morning and learned that we've been accepted into YouTube's partner program. So that's a big deal for any um, YouTuber, any aspiring YouTuber, any YouTube creator who's just starting out. So I talk about this pretty often over on Instagram actually because I been sharing um, sort of like daily updates of our progress bar. If you log into YouTube and you go to YouTube Studio, which is kind of like their creator um, area, it shows you a little progress bar for how far along you are to reaching the eligibility requirements to join their partner program. So YouTube recently uh, announced an update to their partner program that makes the eligibility a little bit lower for phase like I've been calling it phase one. They don't call it phase one. There's like phase one and phase two. There's kind of like two steps. And the first one, you need 3000 public watch hours and a couple of other things uh, within 365 days. And then the second phase or the second part of it is you need 4,000 watch hours. So it's not that much more. We're currently at 3,030 watch hours. So we just passed that 3,000 threshold. And what phase one looks like is that I can now integrate and add things onto my uh, YouTube channel. You uh, you can add memberships and like membership tiers that a membership community on there. You can activate what's called supers and I think that's a way for people to pay to comment um, where they get like priority comment status in the comment section and like little badges and stuff like that. So just fun ways to interact and like to tip a creator on YouTube. And there's like a merch integration. So I'm not too sure about that one, but from what I understand, I'm not sure if it's the same. You can add a merch shelf to the bottom of your videos or the bottom of your channel. It's connected up to a particular print on demand dropshipper called Spring, similar to what we did, had been doing for Grummel Farm on Grummel Farm's online store, but just like directly embedded right on your channel and through a different dropshipper. So I don't have any merchandise for Gritty Gracious and I'm not going to be making any more merchandise for Grummel Farm until I can sort of figure out what I'm doing there. So that's probably not something I'm going to be doing right away. I don't know if I'm going to be doing the membership thing because we have Patreon and I'm actually trying to build a new home for our, our members or our patrons that's just like a little bit more valuable and a little bit more engaged and interactive. So I'll I'll talk more about that soon. And then the supers thing is kind of neat um, for people to be able to do that. But we have like Kofi, we have a tipping jar, like a tip jar in our link tree. We have just like, I don't know, other places that people can tip that don't take such a large percentage. YouTube takes a pretty large percentage, but it doesn't really matter. It's just another outlet for people to show support if they are liking our content or if they feel particularly moved or entertained or educated by a video that Jesse and I make, that option is there for them. But regardless of the actual like features, just to get that notification on my phone and then on my laptop when I 
logged in this morning. It's just a really significant milestone and the more significant milestone is going to be when we get the notification for phase two, which is when we're actually going to be eligible to earn money from ad revenue, which is what we're driving towards, obviously. So that is probably going to be coming up soon, I think. The video that I will have uploaded before this one will be a, a cabin tour. Jesse and I filmed in and shared a cabin tour. And I think that one's going to be really, really popular, which will bump up the watch hours quite a bit. But I also know that my um, community, my audience, my following has been playing our videos on repeat on a loop uh, to get the watch hours up too. They've just been playing it overnight while they sleep or just like on various devices while they work or whatever, just on mute. And that has really been helping. So that's pretty awesome. And I am just really, really Really proud of Jesse and I for committing to this and for being so excited about a goal that can you know it could be typically seen as something that's not that big or like not that important it's just like I don't it's <laughs> it's just like I don't know it's a, it's a little goal it's a small goal but um, to celebrate those small goals I think is so important in just keeping up that momentum to reach bigger goals so I am just I'm so excited I'm so excited that I got that notification I'm so excited that I got it today because now I get to actually I'm in like vloggy brain so I get to vlog about it and capture it and document it and share it in in this video so that's awesome um I'm going to be sharing about this on Instagram for sure because everybody over there has been following along with this journey so far and uh, this is very worthy of sharing so I'm very very excited but it's 6 37 in the morning I purposely decided to come on camera looking like this because this is literally what I look like when I get up in the morning and I'm gonna get actually get ready pretty soon here like in a little bit so that I I'm just like I don't know feeling ready for the day um, I'm feeling a little more confident being on camera and talking to you guys and like bringing you around and stuff like that so I am gonna get ready in a little bit but for now I'm just gonna finish my coffee this mug is so freaking cute is it mama it's my mom's mug I'm not a, I'm not a mama I wish it said pug mama um it's so cute it has these little raised um, ladybugs on the handle and here I just love the feel of it and the shape of it. It's like the perfect beverage vessel. But I'm just going to enjoy this coffee. I'm going to play around with um, hooking up my Google AdSense account um, to our YouTube channel so that we can get all the back end stuff set up. And um, just a couple other things that I'm gonna work on this morning before actually getting up and getting ready. Before I do that, I have to take the dogs downstairs uh, to go pee. And that's a whole fucking thing. You will, you'll know about it. If you watch the, the the other videos that I made for that Calgary playlist the last time that I was here in November, but uh, my mom lives on the fourth floor of an apartment building that doesn't have an elevator, and with three senior pugs, one of whom is blind and one of whom has like mobility issues, I have to carry. It's it's kind of like it's a mixture of of ways that I have to go about it. But for the most part, I have to carry them down and I have to carry them back up again, and that's like eight times a day because I have to go twice. I take Fern and Ivy and then I take Julius and Mina and sometimes I take Julius, Fern and Ivy together and then I take Mina out by herself to be a Chihuahua but yeah so I, I'm gonna try and document that a little bit. It's really really hard when I have to hold my camera and like manage them so we have to go through that whole routine this morning as well and then I have to feed Fern and Ivy and then I'll probably get ready and um, sort of like I don't know make a plan and, and uh, get out there into the city and, and run some errands and do some things. Clean the apartment, bathe the dogs, I'll be cooking um, food and eating along the way and uh, yeah just like chatting with you guys and taking you on a, like a dynamic um, kind of vlog rather than just like a sit down talking video so I don't get to do these very often because um, either like my mom is here when I'm staying here when I've stayed here in the past or Jesse is in the cabin and I just like I literally can't be walking around with my camera filming myself and talking to the camera and like doing that kind of thing when somebody's watching me I, I talk about that all the time <laughs> but because my mom's not here I can actually use my voice and sit down and move around and be silly and just like do whatever I want in like privacy so I'm really excited uh, for today and I'm excited to bring you guys along and thank you for getting us to the YouTube partner program because that was all you guys. I'll talk to you guys in a bit.
I'm just gonna put on my boots and uh, take Fern and Ivy on their own together. Downstairs, go pee pee, poo poo, and then we'll come back up and then we'll take Julius and Mina out together. Depending on the weather, if it's warm or if it's cold, we might go for an actual walk, but probably just a pee break down in front because I'm getting hungry and I wanna come back here and make some breakfast. So I'm gonna put on my Sorrells. I'm just gonna go out in my sweat suit, my Roots sweatsuit, because I don't give a fuck. Julius, you're gonna have to wait, okay? Hi, good job. So they tend to be pretty good going down the stairs when they're on their leashes. They just know what to do. They're being guided. Come on, Fern, it's okay. <laughs> if I'm coming down the stairs without their leashes on, they tend to be a little slower and a little more stubborn. Just expecting to be carried the whole way. Ivy, you can do it, come on. What is, oh, oh, oh my goodness, okay. Oh, yep, we're good. So here's the bottom. It's just, it's five short little flights of stairs, but it's still a lot. So I get here, um, before this closes, I literally always double check to see if I have my keys, because there's nothing worse than doing that and either getting locked out or realizing that I forgot them and having to go back up the stairs again. Um, Ivy is emergency pooping in the foyer here, so I'm just gonna turn the camera off and deal with that. Oh, I'm sorry for making you wait, darling. Okay, let's go out here. And then it's actually really mild out, so usually I just come out here and let them go here, as you can see. This is where everybody lets their dogs go pee, but... Um, I think because it's so nice out, we should actually go for a little stroll around the block, okay? So let's go down this way. There is my sad, dirty little BC car. We're gonna go for a car wash today, actually. One of my favorite things about the city is automatic car washes, I know. So we're gonna, we're gonna go for an automatic car wash probably with the girls in the back and I uh, get my car all nice and clean before I pick up my mom from the airport later this evening. Okay, it was a little colder than I thought it was. And we went around the block, but I ended up having to pick Ivy up because she didn't want to walk anymore. But we're still trucking along. Uh, we're going to attempt to go up the stairs. I have to carry both of them. So to do it when I'm filming is going to be a bit of a challenge, but I'll see what I can do. I'm just going to take off their harnesses because they're not used to actually wearing this stuff. You guys are little nudists back at the cabin, that's for sure. Fern hates it the most. So I'll give them a chance to just sniff and hang out here for a minute. And then I actually have to lift them up this tiny step and uh, start our journey upstairs. So, all right, let's lift you up. There you go. And you, miss. Yeah, let's lift you up. Oh, I have the leashes around my neck, so they're falling in front of the camera. Okay, let's begin this journey. Come on, inside please. Here we go. Oh my gosh, okay. 
So Fern might be excited and energized enough to tackle the first flight, but that's all she will do. Let's try and get her, oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, let's try and get her amped up. Fern, you ready? Fern, you ready? Okay, Fern, go, 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 go. I knew she would do that. <laughs> that's like all she has in her. So I'm gonna carry Ivy and we're just gonna go kind of, can you go up the second one, please? Can you go up? No, you're not gonna do it. Okay, so I like to just go up kind of a few at a time. We will uh, deposit Ivy there and then we're gonna go back and get you. I know you can do it, but you just pretend you cannot. So I, I essentially have to climb up these stairs twice with uh, maybe 40 extra pounds. And then sometimes when I put Fern here, she actually comes back down the stairs and it's the worst. So stay, stay. Okay. Ooh, and it's even harder because in the winter you're dressed up to stay warm outside. So I'm wearing way too many layers. Oh my gosh. And they blast heat in this stairwell, so it's hot. And uh, okay, let's actually see if I can convince you to go up on your own. For the last one, come on, oh yeah. That helps, Fern. Okay, by this point my legs are on fire and feel like they're gonna collapse. I can barely breathe. And uh, yeah, we make our way back. <laughs> so now I have to go do that again with these little dudes. Hey, yeah tripod in here. There was no way I would have been able to bring that down with me. Okay. Are we ready for round two? You guys need treats first. I know. I get it. Non-negotiable is uh, treats when we get back. Julius thinks he deserves some even though he hasn't even gone out yet. But he's so blind he doesn't know where I am. I know, honey. I know. Oh, honey. Oh, honey, it's, there we go, there it is. Okay, one for you. One for you. We'll do another one for you. And then maybe one more for you, even though we didn't go anywhere. One more for Fern to even it out. And uh, I have to deal with this one, who gets all shy and bashful when I bring over her harness. <laughs> Um, so I have to harness her up, harness uh, Julius up, and then I have to carry him down because he is absolutely terrified of the stairs. He can't see anything, has no depth perception. And uh, I actually have to carry Mina down too because she's absolutely terrified and refuses to go. So we're gonna carry both of them down and then I'll show you um, how we get back up the stairs because apparently everybody has a different style of how they like to get up the stairs, huh? Yeah, you three. Chilly. <laughs> Look at that bun. Okay, so I use a Sony ZV-1 Mark II for vlogging. It's like Sony's compact little vlogging camera. And this morning I woke up with three full batteries and now I have zero full batteries. This one is about to die and it's my third. I've done three battery changes. I think the cold isn't doing me any favors, but still. So I have to pause. I have to. I thought I had to pause everything, vlogging, recording, and using this thing um, because it takes forever for the batteries to charge and I have to charge them one by one because I can't find an external battery charger that charges multiple batteries at once. So I have to plug in my camera into the wall and let it charge one by one inside of the camera. It's, it's bullshit, I don't like it. I need like literally 50 fucking batteries to get through one day of vlogging with this thing. The only time it really works is when it's set up on my tripod and it's actually plugged into power or I need to get an external battery pack that I can like carry around in my pocket like and attach it while I'm vlogging. It's it's super messed up. I don't know. It, I get that they're trying to keep it compact and small and lightweight and easy and portable and whatever, but it kind of like I don't know. To me it's sort of messed up that a battery doesn't last for more than like 5 fucking minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna use my phone. The, qu the quality is fine. I feel like this camera is probably a little bit better when I'm recording my face and I'm, I'm filming myself in front of the camera, but to film 
going downstairs and taking Julius and Mina out for a pee. I'm literally just gonna use my phone. So we're gonna swap to that. I'm gonna come back and hopefully by then I'll have like one battery charged that I can use, but probably not. I don't know. That's the other thing is that vlogging is like this constant problem solving situation. I'm also still kind of like just getting started and figuring out what I need to do. So more batteries, that's for sure. Anyways, um, let's go down the stairs with my iPhone. <laughs> In case you're interested, this is how I set up my tripod with my iPhone. If I'm using, if I have to use it for that, which I do now. So usually I have my Sony camera hooked up here, but we're gonna use this small rig um, just to hold my phone. And we're just gonna use that because I'm gonna take a couple clips of putting on Mina's harness and um, probably a couple clips of me walking out the door. And then I'm just gonna pop my pop socket on the back of this and just handheld, uh, handhold everything else while we're walking. Speaking of pop sockets, look what I found yesterday. It's a fern pop socket. I found this at Cabela's. I went to Cabela's for the first time, which is kind of like the Canadian version of, I think it's called REI down in the States. I don't know what that stands for, but like it's a big outdoor store. And they had all of these naturey, kind of like camping inspired outdoor pop sockets. And I couldn't believe that there was a fern pop socket. This, this pop socket is for MagSafe cases. I actually had a patron um, send it to me for a Christmas gift, but you can change the tops and so it used to be just like a clear one and I Changed it to this one and I friggin absolutely love it. Like how perfect is that? It's gorgeous Okay Let's go Okay, so I'm on my phone now. Here's my vlogging camera in case you're curious um, Just charging away the battery here so i prefer vlogging with this because it's really 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 good quality and it just it's uh, easier to flip the screen out and like see what i'm doing when i'm filming myself i can't do that when i'm using the front camera on my iphone um and also the quality is just a little bit lower on my iphone it's a little bit grainier um <clears throat> but you know i i invested in this thing specifically for the purpose of vlogging and i really 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 love the way the videos look i just can't keep it powered up for long enough so i'm gonna have to yeah figure that out okay let's try <laughs> let's try and put this on you nina don't bite me please hi you're in your bed. Actually, this is our bed. Did you know that? I think you need one though. And then she actually has a little winter jacket that I'll just try and put on on top. Yeah, you can just chill it there for a minute. Okay. So, it's Mia, you're like disappearing inside of this bed. I know. We're actually just gonna take this, put it over there, and then <laughs> okay. Let's try that, huh? So let's put your sweater on, because Mina has a coat, so you should have some kind of coat, hey? It's colder out than I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was mild. It's not mild, it's still yucky. Okay, very cute. It's kind of Christmassy, because that's Rudolph, but that's okay. Hey, okay? I'm sure you don't mind. You can't even see it, so you're a lot easier to do this for than Mina, I gotta say. I'm We'll put this on and we're good. We did it. Okay, this is the point where I have to pick Julius up in addition to Mina, so I won't be able to film this, but he, as soon as he gets out here, he's like terrified and he won't. Um, I can actually gently coax him to come down. It just takes a long time. Julie, it's okay, follow my voice. Follow my voice. It's okay, good boy. 
Good boy. It's okay. Come on. Yes, good boy. You got it. You got it. He's not going for it. So I have to turn this off, throw my phone in my pocket, pick him up, and then uh, make our way down. Okay, we made it to the bottom. I don't know if Mia will move. Oh, she seems to be doing okay. All right. Do I have my keys? Yes, I do. Okay, proceed. Out here. I'm gonna give them a moment to, Mina, it's okay, you're not gonna die. It's okay, Mina, if you stay there, you might die because the door is gonna close on you. Okay, you know, I have to pick you up, put you here so you can go pee, okay? And then Julius, I'll just kind of go here. So I'm just gonna let them sniff it out. I'm actually gonna take a seat here. Um, I'm gonna let them pee. And then uh, I have to pick her up because she won't walk an inch and then um, walk around the block with Julius. Okay. I'm so hungry. Hi, buddy. Are we ready to go for a little walk around the block? Hey, can I see your face? Hey, face. Hey, buddy. Okay, Nina's on the run. I'm gonna grab her and we'll go for a little walk. You need some exercise because you're kind of chonky. Yes, you are, you're a chonky boy. Okay, let's go for a walk, Mina. Hey, this is your walk. And Julie, even though he's blind, he does really well. He just kind of follows my voice, um, follows probably my scent, and just uh, bumbles along the way and kind of has a few pee breaks and sniffs some things, and it's good for you. Blind dogs still need to go for walkies. Yeah. I've really been enjoying these little birds in my mom's neighborhood. They're just little, oh, they all flew away. They're just little house sparrows, but it's pretty funny. Uh, in this apartment building here, there's somebody who is feeding them uh, with a little feeder on their balcony, which is something I would do if I lived in an apartment building like this. And uh, I was watching the other day and there's like literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sparrows um, on their balcony um, eating <laughs> food. My mom told me very adamantly that she did not want to put bird seed on her balcony for that reason. She's like, it's too messy. There's bird seed poop everywhere, which is true. But I, I personally think it's worth it for the entertainment. And plus, it's like such a nice way to get connected to nature when you're in the city and living in an apartment building like that, I think, personally. So for a little dog that weighs like two pounds, my arm is literally aching from carrying her the entire way. She only walks when she knows we're going home. And uh, both of them are capable of getting up this little step. Even Julius. Fern and Ivy are just like, nope, we don't know how to do that. Okay. Oopsies. So I'll show you guys what Mina and Julius do to get up the stairs. It makes it a lot easier for me, I'll tell you that much. Um, Mina refuses to come in this door. So my mom usually carries her every single step of the way. Okay, and you're in, good job. So Julius, I'm gonna take off his harness. And uh, he, surprisingly, as blind as he is, he's still super mobile. And uh, he can get up the stairs. Mina is like turbocharged chihuahua. Okay, up you Jules and go. So she gets a little scared when she reaches the top. Hard bit. Mina, come on, come on, let's go. Good girl, come on. Yeah, good girl. Oh, you're stuck on Julius. Okay, we're going up, we're going up. Okay, Julius is gonna follow right behind. Good, and uh, we'll do that again. Here, Mina. Mina. Okay, start up, and then maybe you'll come. Okay, yep, yeah, mm hmm This is her least favorite floor. So uh, take a moment to get her over here. Come on. Come on, Mina, come on. I'm going up. 
Okay. Julie! Good boy, monkey. There we go. Okay, guess what? It's the last one. Uh, and up you go. Okay. Good boy. Okay, so home stretch. Sorry. Let's go, Jules. Oh. Can you hear Fern and Ivy? <laughs> Okay, I like to take off her stuff before we get inside because we actually have a bit more room in this hallway than we do inside. So, yeah, I'll take this off. Oh yeah, you're stuck on the leash, sorry. There we go, unbuckle, boom, you're free. You're free, and then you, oh yeah. <laughs> So I'll get that in a second. We're just working with limited space here. Okay, in you go. In you go, in you go. Ivy, hi, sweetie. Okay. All right, so it's treats time for Julius and Mina. I'm just gonna grab this stuff and put it in this little bucket right here. And then we're gonna do treats for Julius and Mina. Mina has her specific treats that she likes and Julius will literally eat anything. You already got treats earlier. Also, but I'll give you more. Don't worry. I'll give you girls some too. Okay, so Mina, here's my battery graveyard. I'm going to charge those up. Uh, Mina doesn't like these ones. These are like peanut butter, um, like hip and joint, soft and chewy treats. Doesn't like them. Um, so she likes these itty hip and joint beef jerky bites instead. Uh, I can't open this with one hand. Hang on. No. Okay. And now... Yes. You guys get some to feel included. Oh, that's a good girl. I know. Can you see this, Julius? Oh. <laughs> Where did it go? Here you go. It's right there. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. And fun. And we're almost done. Another one, Julie. <laughs> yeah, you gotta smell it out. Ivy. Burn. And then maybe I should give Mina just like one more little jerky bite. Just to close it off. Okay, you guys are good. That's all I got. All gone. All gone. Okay, I'm back on Sony ZV. <laughs> I have it hooked up to power, plugged into the wall, so uh, hopefully, I mean, it will stay charging while I'm using it. It probably won't charge as fast, but we're going to go back to this while I feed Fern and Ivy, and then I feed myself. Uh, so Fern and Ivy get breakfast and dinner. I'm just going to feed them breakfast here. What time is it? 9.56. It's 10 in the morning. 9 o'clock BC time, 10 o'clock Alberta time. Um, I'm going to feed Fern and Ivy and uh, Julius and Mina actually only get fed once a day. Um, that's just their feeding schedule that my mom has had them on for a while. So they, they don't get to eat until later tonight um, with Fern and Ivy when I feed them dinner. So I'm sure most of you guys know this, but Fern and Ivy um, eat raw and Julius and Mina eat raw as well. So that's an excellent thing. Julius will steal um, their breakfast if I don't uh, protect them and put them in separate rooms. So Fern actually eats in the bathroom. Come here, honey. Was there oh, there's Ivy's rope. Do you want this, Ivy? Do you want your rope? No, you want your breakfast. Okay, yeah, see? He's such a thief. Sorry, I'll top that up for you, Fern. Okay, you go. You go. We're just gonna... 
towel there so we can close the door. <laughs> so there's Fern. You! That was my fault, actually. And then uh, step around my tripod here. Um, Ivy gets to eat in the bedroom. So I've been sleeping in my mom's bedroom, but I'll be sleeping on the couch later tonight after I pick her up. So we're just gonna, no, oh my God, Julius. No, Julius. <laughs> they hang my house coat up here. So I'm just gonna do that. We'll give Ivy some light and uh, she can eat in here. Ooh, okay, so now I have like two minutes to recalibrate <laughs> until they're finished. You are so bad. Are you done? Are you done? Yeah, okay. Take this. So you've got to clean that. I've got to do the dishes. That's where I'm going to start. Um, cleaning up. Turn that off. Hang this back up for the shower I'm gonna take this morning. And then Ivy, who would probably be perfectly content just hanging out in this bedroom all day. Hi, sweet one. Yeah, we've got to clean up the bedroom too because all my stuff is in here. Um, so we've got a lot of cleaning to do. And organizing and tidying up. Just gonna take out the silicon insert for that we're gonna clean that up in a minute here and yeah is that your rope are we gonna do a little rope dance oh ivy's happy belly rope hey babes is that your happy belly rope oh wow <laughs> good girl yeah okay The lighting in my mom's kitchen is a little unforgiving. It's just harsh overhead lighting that I'm really trying to get over. I'm trying not to look at myself in the, the screen over here. Um, now that the majority of the day, yeah, it's 10.39 in the morning, the majority of the morning has been eaten up by taking care of these little beasts and uh, taking them out for pee pee poo poo potty breaks twice, going down those stairs, coming up those stairs, feeding Fern and Ivy. I just did the dishes real quick. I finally get to take care of myself. <laughs> so I am so hungry and I just wanna show you guys what I'm gonna make. First of all, I picked up this, it's called porchetta. I've never heard of it. It says Farms Porchetta. I got this from Sunterra, this really nice market just down the street from my mom's place. It's pork, pork belly wrapped in pork loin and then marinated in a whole bunch of herbs. So I am going to pull this out and let it rest for a couple of hours on the counter and then I have to bake it for about three or four hours, but I'll just get this, I think I'm just gonna get this cooked today so that I can either eat it or bring it home with me um, instead of like traveling home with this like raw chunk of meat. So I'm gonna do that. I'm, I'm trying to decide. Actually, you know what? I might freeze it. I think I'm gonna freeze it and um, bring it home because I wanna order sushi tonight, specifically like just for the vlog. Like I just wanna do it for the vlog. I don't get to order in food or do food delivery ever at the cabin and I've only done it once while I'm here. I was trying not to do it all the time because it's expensive and it's like not the healthiest. I got Vietnamese noodle soup a couple of days ago. I had it delivered here and the magic of just like inputting your order on a website and having food friggin' show up at your doorstep like a half an hour later is mind-blowing to me. So it's just such a novelty. It's just such a city luxury. So if tonight's gonna be my last night here, I want to order in some sushi, so we're gonna do that later. So I might actually just freeze this and um, cook this with Jesse when I'm back at the cabin. So for breakfast this morning, I have these little bacon and cheese uh, sliders that I bought from Sunterra as well. I'm gonna cook those. Um, they're just like little kind of beef patties. And then I'm going to scramble up these last three eggs that are in here. My mom left these here for me. I'm going to make them with some like matzo cheddar cheese, uh, some bacon bits, and then I'm going to have some fruit. I have some blackberries. Uh, I got a mango from Sunterra because it was like perfectly ripe. I hope it's not rotten, but 
I'm so excited. And then I found this really interesting orange. It's called a, it's called Sumo Citrus, probably GMO, but uh, it just like looked so, it's so soft and squishy. And I'm like, oh, this is probably so juicy and flavorful and delicious. So we're gonna have some fruit, an orange, a Sumo Citrus orange, a mango, some blackberries, some bacon cheddar beef, sliders, kind of like a little scramble with some cheese and some uh, bacon bits. And then I'm just gonna toast one piece of bread with some peanut butter and some jam that was sitting in my mom's fridge. Normally I would I would avoid this, both the peanut butter and the jam and the carbs um, lately anyways, but we're gonna do it today because I am really hungry and I just think it's gonna be really yummy. So I'm gonna take some time, cook this up, and then probably just like hang out on the couch for a hot minute and eat breakfast and nourish myself and get ready to clean and organize the apartment. This ended up turning out like way bigger than I expected. <laughs> I haven't had a breakfast like this since I've been here. I actually haven't had a breakfast like this. No, you already stole everyone else's food in a long time. I don't eat big breakfasts like this anymore. And I definitely haven't been eating very well since I've been here, i.e. like takeout Vietnamese and ordering sushi tonight, all that stuff. But um, hello. Oh my God. Okay, okay. So I, I actually just published the cabin tour video today. So by the time you guys are watching this, it will have been up for a while, but I just published it this morning. I uploaded it last night. And so I'm just gonna eat and um, reply to some comments that people have left so far. And um, yeah, I just do like a little bit of work on my laptop. And then uh, after that, I think I'm finally gonna have a shower and like get dressed um, so I can give my hair an opportunity to dry. I'm gonna leave it down and uh, let it curl today. And then, um, yeah, I'm just gonna tidy up the apartment and then we're gonna head out and run some errands to pass um, some time before we head to the airport. Yes? Do you want something? So yeah, Whew, I'm so hungry. Okay, so we just set my camera up here. I don't know if I'm gonna be like in the frame or if you're just gonna see my reflection. I'm not entirely sure. My mom's bathroom, the, the fan and the light are connected to one light switch. So I can't turn off the noisy fan, which sucks because I just want to film in here for like a minute while I put some makeup on and get my hair um, ready to air dry. But we're just going to have to hope for the best and hope that that's not too loud or too annoying. There's literally nothing I can do about it. So yeah, I just had a shower and um, I'm going to put some product in my hair so that it can air dry nice and curly. I bought a new hat that I'm actually really excited about that I'll share about a little later. It's nothing like crazy, but I am excited about it. So I'm going to wear, I liked the way my hat looked in the cabin tour video actually. And I was like, wow, that actually makes my hair a lot more manageable. Cause it's not like I just stick a hat on top and make sure it looks nice and curly on the bottom. So that's kind of what I'm, um, I think I'm going to be doing that for a little while, uh, from now on. I don't know why I just found, like I just found out about hats. <laughs> and how easy it makes managing your hair. So one thing I wanted to quickly share because I'm super excited about it, this stuff, um, I'm not sure if you can see the brand name from that far away, but whenever I come to Calgary, I can't not restock my Curl Smith products. So 
If you're not a curly girl or you don't care about curly hair stuff, you can just forward over jump to the next um, like chapter or section of this vlog. But I just want to talk about this for a little while because it's actually super interesting. So when I got here, I knew that I wanted to restock on Curlsmith, but I wanted to make sure that I was getting the right stuff because they've expanded their product line so much. I am not by no means sponsored by Curlsmith. I actually applied once to be part of their ambassador program and they like ghosted me. So yeah, it wasn't for lack of trying. But anyways, they have so many products and they've expanded their line quite a bit and it's just like a little bit overwhelming and I really just don't know what I didn't know what I really needed or what I really wanted the only thing I knew for sure is that I wanted to get their detox kit which is like these well I have four because I had an old bottle but it's um this blue line and uh it's essentially just like a microbiome like pH balancing um, probiotic, prebiotic, and postbiotic system. That's like a clarifying system to basically um, like deep cleanse your hair and get out any kind of like gunk or buildup. So I knew that I did want this, um, but I didn't know what I wanted for wash. I didn't know what I wanted for shampoo, for conditioner, um, for co-wash. Co I actually didn't know what that was. I had to learn. And then I didn't know what I wanted for like styling stuff. Like I still, I've been using Curlsmith for a little while now, probably a couple of years, but I'm still super confused about my hair and I don't know what the hell is going on with it or what it wants or what it needs or whatever. The one thing I will say is that the quality of my curls and just like these, like, these, they call them curl clumps, is so much better in the water here. The well water at the cabin ma almost makes all of these products irrelevant to begin with. But just being here um, with, and using like treated water on my hair is something I never thought I would value so much. I definitely appreciate well water and spring water at the cabin for drinking and for cooking and for, you know, giving to the dogs. And like, I was gonna say like watering plants and stuff. I don't water plants, but like anything like that, like ingesting it. And I do, you know, I do appreciate being in fresh, like spring water, groundwater, you know, on my skin, but it makes my skin so dry, so dry. It makes my scalp dry, it makes my hair, it just fucks up my hair, it just fucks it up. Like I can't even, you guys have heard me complain about my hair for like, ever. Anyway, so it's a little bit of a dis different situation being in the city. One of the first things I did when I got to Calgary is I went onto Curl Smith's website and I took their curl quiz. They have a quiz there. Uh, you answer these questions and then they give you your curl type, which is kind of an interesting thing to learn about. And like, I don't know, I didn't know about it for the longest time, which is crazy, but it turns out that my curl type is kind of like a 2B, in between 2B and 2C. So it's actually more of a wave than it is a curl, even though it can topple over into like a 3A situation. Sometimes it just depends. So I have more of like a, a wave curl that starts a little bit lower down my hair because my, my roots are usually pretty straight. Like my curl, my coil or my curl doesn't start up here ever. It starts lower down and it's more of a wave. And I like that. I actually prefer that. But anyway, so I did that quiz because I wanted to learn more about my hair's um, porosity, its density, its thickness, um, things like this that I, I, ha I actually didn't have the answer to. And so they ask a bunch of questions in this um, quiz, which is to get you on their marketing email list. And then they send you your results and some product recommendations. So I took the quiz and it came back with all of these products from their purple line, which is their strength recipe, which is really high in protein. But I was curious about the porosity of my hair because I wasn't quite sure if I got that answer right on the quiz. So I actually went to Lus. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's just L-U-S. It's another popular curl brand. I think it's a competitor of Curlsmith. And I took, um, I didn't take a quiz, but they actually had uh, two tests that you could take yourself to determine the porosity of your hair. And one of them was to take a strand and put it in a cup of water and uh, see if it floated on the top or if it kind of sank to the middle or if it sank to the bottom. And then the other test was to take a hair mister and take a, a you know a piece of your dry curly hair and just mist hair on it and see how easily the water absorbed into your hair so if the water stayed in little droplets or pearls um, kind of on the surface of your hair that meant one thing and then if it kind of soaked in after a short period of time that was another thing and if it soaked in right away that was the third thing so I'm just having a hard time remembering because there's low porosity and high porosity and my my hair is low porosity so what that means is that it takes a really freaking long time for it to get wet and it takes a really freaking long time for it to get dry. It doesn't let in water very easily, but then when it does, it keeps it inside. So that answer I had actually gotten wrong over on Curlsmith and 
on the Lust website, they had told me that I wanted to stay away from products with lots of protein in it and that my hair didn't need a lot of protein, even though Curl Smith's quiz told me that I needed to pretty much get all of their strength recipe formulas or whatever. So I was like, okay, that's a little bit weird. So I decided that I wanted to go um, and get their orange line, which is their moisture recipe, just to give my hair as much moisture as possible. And for the longest time, I've been using their co-wash. This is their curl quenching conditioning wash. And I actually didn't know what this was. I learned what co-washing is recently and co-washing is basically conditioner washing. So it's just a wash that you do every once in a while to avoid using the strength of a shampoo that's gonna strip all your moisture out. So I've only been using this, which apparently isn't good either because you need to like cleanse your hair every once in a while. So I got the detox kit, which is great. I used it right away. It's probably one of my favorite things on planet earth. This post-wash calming conditioner is full of tea tree. And so when you rub it into your scalp, it just makes it feel so cool and tingly and it is the freshest feeling in the world. I love it so much. So, and then they have this wash and scrub detox probiotic, which is um, almost like an exfoliant for your scalp. And it's got these little micro beads in it. They're so small. It's not beads either. It's not plastic beads. Um, it's some kind of vol volcano. It says our scrub is made of gentle, natural particles. Its texture is incredibly fine. So it can effectively exfoliate the scalp and wash off without leaving residues. So it's like, um, just as gentle, fine scrub. So it's not little beads or anything like that, but it is like a kind of a gritty, a fine gritty texture, which just feels so nice on the scalp. And then the post-wash calming conditioner with that tea tree, like tingling feeling. I just, oh, it's like self-care to the max for me, but I, I only do this probably about once a week, if not a little bit longer. So I got that system. And then what I decided to do once I got there and saw what they had is rather than going with the moisture recipe, which is their orange line, I, I um, decided to try their green line, which is their frizz, anti-frizz recipe or their frizz control recipe. And it's new. This is their newest one. So I ended up getting the frizz control cleanser, which is their shampoo, and then the frizz control dual conditioner, which is their conditioner. It can also be used as a leave-in. And then I, for styling products, I decided to get their frizz recipe you curl retainer which is a gel which I'm going to be using with the moisture recipe curl conditioning oil and cream so I'm actually going to use that first to moisturize and then I'm going to use the Frizz Rescue Curl Retainer Gel um, to style. And then I got something kind of fun. It's their Frizz Rescue Finishing Serum. So this is kind of just like a serum that you can pull through your curls or pull through your strands after it's dry to give it like a little bit of extra shine, a little bit of extra frizz control. So this is like my, my new cleansing and styling routine. And then I have their Moisture Recipe Double Cream Curl Quencher, which is a deep, ma deep uh, moisturizing mask, deep conditioning mask that you can put in there like once a week or whatever. I also got the Moisture Recipe Hold Me Softly Style Balm, which I'll use possibly in replacement of the curl conditioning oil in cream just because it's light it's lighter uh, it's much much lighter so I, I might I'm just gonna play with these two and see which one I like a little bit better and then this is old this is a product that I got originally it's their insta in shower style fixer so this is a gel as well it's a, it's a strength 10 extreme hold the frizz rescue curl retainer um, gel from their anti frizz recipe is a six hold so I found sometimes that using the 10 hold made my hair really really sticky and it just like made these like it just I don't know I just didn't like how it felt um, or looked at all um, so I still have a little bit of that left but who knows um, I'm just gonna try this instead because I'm looking for more of like a softer definition softer hold but I just want it to be like really moisturized and like really soft and like shiny and and whatever like who doesn't want that so I was just so excited about this I feel like I learned so much just by researching like the Curl Smith product line and then going on to less and, and learning about curls over there and kind of comparing the two resources the two piece like the two yeah, pieces of information on, on my curl type specifically. And uh, when I was in the shower, I just used these for the first time. They smell really yummy. It has watermel watermelon seed in it, I guess. Some of these ingredients are always so funny to me. But um, yeah, watermelon seed frizz control uh, anti-frizz recipe line from curlsmith so i yeah i'm just like so excited about it so i'm just going to completely drench my hair in product i'm going to use i think i'm actually going to do the hold me softly style balm instead of the curl conditioning oil and cream because it's new and i'm just excited about it and then i'm going to follow up with the frizz rescue curl retainer from the anti-frizz recipe and then after it's dry i'll try the frizz rescue finishing serum so i already did these 
and I'm not going to use those. So I'm going to use these two. I'm going to use this one later. I'm going to completely saturate my hair with this. This is new. It's a continuous spray um, hair sprayer, spritzer, whatever it's called. My hairdresser Erica gave me this as a gift uh, when I went to go see her and get my, got my hair cut shorter back in November. So I'm just going to brush my hair. I'm going to saturate it and then I'm just going to completely soak it in these two products here. And uh, I'm just going to let it air dry while I put on a little bit of makeup and get dressed for the rest of the day. Holy, I feel like I talked about that for a long fucking time. <laughs>